Good, good evening, good evening to my fellow brothers and sisters of Africa. And, uh, good afternoon to people who are joining from the West, like President Fabian and the rest of the people. Thank you so, so much, Dr. Lisa. For, good evening, Mr. For that incredible, incredible uh, presentation. And I hope that a lot of people did learn um, the same way that I did from that presentation. Okay, so we are looking at a very important topic. When, 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 when President Fabian sent me the topic for, or the team for this conference, talking about driving youth actions towards Africa's security, contemporary economy, and a sustainable future, I was like, um, at that, in that very discussion, I immediately gave him the topic I would like to talk about because um, there has been this particular key question I have been asking myself a couple of times throughout this year. And the question has been, who are the young leaders who will transform Africa? And I sent him the topic and I said, this is what I would like to talk about. I'd like to talk on the topic, who are the young leaders who will transform the African continent? And this, the purpose of this conference, the purpose of this gathering is to contribute to that capacity building and the transformation of the young people who can transform Africa. And from the first keynote address, we started seeing a couple of key things that if we are going to create a transformation, we need to start embodying, practicing, and of course, using these elements to create the values. You know, I was talking to a young person yesterday and I said, if you are going to become the leader that will create transformation and contribute to growth, anytime you sit in a training session, in a presentation like this, learn to do two things. And I'll say the same thing to all of us here. Anytime you are in a training session like this, you're in a conference like this, you're in a session where experts and colleagues are sharing perspectives about things that we can do to advance forward, always do two things. Number one, ask yourself, what will I start doing because of what I have learned today? And number two, what will I stop doing because of what I have learned today? Because these are the things that will play a critical role and position us to become those people that can effect that change. I have been asking a lot of questions lately. And one of the questions I've been asking is, um, 10, 20 years ago, they told us that we are leaders of tomorrow. Today, there are many people who will still tell us we are leaders of tomorrow. Tomorrow, somebody will still tell you, you are a leader of tomorrow. And the question is, when will we start leading? When are we going to start leading in a way that we can create transformation, in a way that we can contribute to the growth of Africa in terms of security, in terms of economic growth, and in terms of building that sustainable future that we all desire to see happen. So who are the young leaders who will transform Africa? If you believe that you're one of the young leaders who will transform Africa, can you type in the chat box, I will transform Africa? Let's go. If you believe, if you, if you, if you have that conviction that you are among the young people that will contribute to the transformation of Africa, can you type in the chat box, I will transform Africa? Awesome. I'm seeing a lot of people. It, it, it starts from that belief. It starts from that conviction that you can, can do that. You know, as, as a business consultant, I have had the privilege to travel 15 African countries to speak in events. And in all of these countries, I've spoken in youth, youth conferences. So I've encountered thousands and thousands of young people across different uh, countries in Africa. And one thing I came to realize is that we face almost the same challenges across all these countries. All these countries. However, you will still see the possibilities that there is a lot that we can bring to the table as young people. There's a lot that we can contribute to 
the growth and the transformation of Africa as young people. And for us to do that, if we are going to become the young people who can transform Africa, then we need to become a certain type of young people. We need to become the certain type of young people because we cannot remain the same. We cannot um, have the same mindset, the same character, the same skill set, the same tool set, and, and expect to transform Africa. You see? So these are the young people who will transform Africa. And I'll be sharing a couple of key things that I strongly believe that if we are going to create that transformation, we need to start embodying these things and be very intentional about these things and have the consciousness that it's not just about myself. It is about the continent. It is about a generation. It is about contributing to who we are supposed to become. And the number one thing that we need to start looking at is becoming problem solvers with a vision. Becoming problem solvers with a vision. Now, what does that mean? That means that if we are going to transform Africa, if you are going to school, for example, to study banking and finance, you are not going to acquire the skill just to have a good job in the banking sector so that you can earn a good salary. But you need to have a vision on how you are going to contribute to the financial sector to advance Africa. You see, we're talking about young people who will contribute to the contemporary economy. So it's not just about you, you know, getting a job. It's not just about you starting a, a startup or a small business, but it's about you having the mindset that you are going to solve a problem, but you will be a visionary while doing that. Problem-solving oriented visionaries. Africa needs more of those type of young people. The young people who will transform Africa are young people who, are, who have this problem-solving oriented visionary. Because it is the ability to operate from a place where you are conscious that what you are doing is beyond what you will eat and what you will wear. It is about your ability to advance the economy in the best way that you can. Number two, who are the young people that will transform Africa? Young people that have the right combination of skills to create the value that Africa needs. I always like to say that in the marketplace, nobody's going to pay you because you're tall, short, fat, thin, whatever. Nobody's going to pay you because you come from a particular tribe and all of that. There was a time that that was very relevant. But we have entered a marketplace dispensation where you will be rewarded and you will be acknowledged and you will be celebrated based on the value that you can create. And we are now in a dispensation where if you don't have the right combination of skills, I have worked on a couple of research across the African continent on skills development, upskilling, reskilling, and all of these things around skills. And skills development have been discovered as one of the greatest uh, um, barriers when it comes to young people being employable or having the ability to build enterprises that can contribute to the growth of Africa. So the, the research talks about you recruit people in Africa. For example, Dr. Lisa was talking about that where you go on Fiverr, you go on Upwork and all these platforms. There are many countries you will not see the professionals who have the skills that can serve the global market. So the young people who will transform Africa are skillful young people. And not just young people who are skillful at anything, but the young people who have the right combination of skills to create the right value in the right industry and contribute to the good of Africa. So you listening to me, do you have the right skills to be an industry captain in the African continent? Because without these skills, 
we will keep having a lot of young people who are doing a lot of talk, but we will not have the capacity to contribute at the global landscape. Because whether we like it or not, to be able to play the big game at the global landscape, first of all, it is the value that the continent can bring to the landscape or the nation can bring to the landscape. And it goes down to the young people. And I like to talk about the combination of skills because that is where people that are exceptional get to operate. If you have just auxiliary skills, or you have just a couple of skills, there is no way you can create value at the highest level. For example, if, if you read marketing in school, which is very common across Africa, you see a lot of young people who are marketing graduates, and they are inadequate in the way they have been trained. And in this dispensation, I was talking, I've been talking to a few university proprietors and I said, if in your marketing faculty, you don't have independent courses that can teach young people in Africa on how they can use independent social media platform to generate attention, package attention and monetize attention, you are training young people for the marketplace the right way. And I said, if in your banking and finance department, you are not training young people on blockchain technology, fintech, cryptocurrency, and any of these digital assets that the world is talking about. You are training young people who will appear late in the marketplace. If you are a young person who will replicate the theme of this conference and be a key player in the contemporary economy of the African continent, you must start thinking deeply about what are the core combination of skills that I need to develop and be good at so I can become a key player in whatever industry I've decided to play at. And when you begin to do that, you start combining what I call precision of wisdom. You know, we are, we are bypassing the dimension where generalists get to have a lot that they can bring to the table. When a dispensation where they're more precise, they're more meticulous, they're more efficient, the more excellent you are at something, it advances your ability to contribute to a nation, to a company, or to an industry. Number three, who are the young people who will transform Africa? Number three, young people who have the ability to disrupt old patterns and introduce new patterns. These are the young people who will transform Africa. Disrupt old patterns and introduce new patterns. We need to start questioning what our parents have been doing for the last 30 years or 40 years. And start asking the question, what can we disrupt so we can introduce better patterns that work now? 30 years ago, my mom did not know about WhatsApp and Facebook. 30 years ago, we didn't have the ability to sit on the same platform like this on different countries and different continents and different houses under one voice and one mission and one objective. The realities are changing. So if you are going to be the young person who will transform Africa, you need to start thinking like an iconoclast. Who's an iconoclast? An iconoclast is an individual who is very conscious at challenging old beliefs, challenging generally acceptable standards, and being a non-conformist and taking steps to create processes, innovation, and ideas that can innovate what has been existing for so long and is no longer producing the results that are relevant in this dispensation and introducing ideas and concepts that fit the present dispensation and most importantly, thinking about the future of the economy. And if you look around us in Africa, whether you're committed from Nigeria, Ghana, Tanzania, Liberia, Cameroon, wherever you're connecting from, 
one of the things still holding us back is that old patterns are still in play in a new dispensation. And our fathers don't have the ability to do that. Only us can introduce better patterns to challenge old patterns that are still at work, but they are no longer very productive. Only young people can do that. I, had, I was in a dinner in, in one of the embassies in Yaoundé, and I had the opportunity to talk to one of the ministers. I, I don't know what we're talking about, and I said, Your Excellency, do you know that the phone that you're holding, I can bet you that 90% of the apps you have in your phone were developed by young people below 25 years old. And I said, you know, the change in the thing that you can change is not in your capacity to change. It is my generation that can bring the change that you think you can change. We laughed about it, but I was sending a message to him. Young people need to start being very conscious. What is that old idea around you that you can start disrupting? And what can you bring new and contribute? Or how can you partner with young people in different ecosystems and bring your contribution so you guys can become a community of pattern disruptors and people can introduce something better in the marketplace? Number four. I'm just doing the blueprints here and there because I don't have much time. Number four, who are the young people who will transform Africa? Young people who understand that the only way to scale up and leave a legacy is to create something that can be replicated and improved upon without them. Who are the young people that will transform Africa. Young people who are intentional and understand that the only way to scale up and leave a legacy in their various nations and in the continent as a whole, they understand that they have to create something that can be replicated and can be improved without them. When the president was talking, he said that this organization that he runs is already in three continents. I don't know how many countries, but we need the young people who are creating institutions or ideas who are thinking about replicating into other nations and other cities. And not only replicating, but they are very okay that other people can bring in their own ideas and improve on what they have created. If you're somebody who studies political patterns, you'll notice this one thing that we lack in the political system across Africa. So I work a lot with business people as a full-time consultant. And one thing I've been teaching a lot of African business leaders lately has been, please make sure you are replicating in other countries. As I always fondly say, if you run a business in Africa and you are not in Nigeria, you are not in Kenya. You are not in South Africa. You are not yet in Africa. What am I trying to say? Learn how to replicate your ideas. We will not change Africa being in our little comfort zone. But I'm not saying that you should start big because young people can become very ambitious. I'm saying if you are starting small locally, make sure you have a plan, have a structure, have that consciousness that what you're starting is not just to feed you and feed your family, but what you are starting has the capacity to liberate Africa in a particular industry. And you can do that when you understand that for you to scale up and leave a legacy, you need to replicate what you're doing and be comfortable that some people can join you along the way and improve and make it better. Then we are going to transform Africa. I was fondly teaching business in a couple of business schools that I, I guess lectured and I said, the difference between American entrepreneurs and African entrepreneurs is that when somebody's building anything for America, they're thinking global. But in Africa, we are building, we're thinking about our village people and our family members. That's why Americans can really transform the world. They are building, although they're starting local, but they're thinking about the global marketplace. 
They're thinking about how can I replicate this in different nations and different continents. The only way you're going to scale up and transform Africa is to have that consciousness. Number five, as a roundup, the young people who will transform Africa need to understand this simple principle. Action precedes recognition. Action precedes recognition. With the growth of social media, one thing that is rampant in our generation is that we are so eager to be recognized and to receive titles and to receive this and that that we celebrated with very little work being done. It's very rampant right now. And that is happening because social media is a platform where a lot of people get to talk a lot about their success stories. And many a times, people, young people are under pressure to leave the life that those people are living forgetting the quality of action that they take offline to produce the result that you see online. If there's one thing that we must understand as a bedrock for young people is action precedes recognition. If you will be recognized as a transformer, you need to take certain actions and produce certain results for you to be recognized. If you are going to be recognized as an industry captain in Africa, you contributed to a particular industry, healthcare, agriculture, technology, whatever. You need to go back to the bedrock. What actions do I need to take? What actions do I need to take for that to move forward? And number six, as I round up, focus on being valuable than being interesting. Interesting in quotes, entertaining. Again, goes back to our present dispensation. And I'm sure you know that we have more distractions now than it used to be 10, 20, 15 years ago. And many young people in Africa are focusing a lot on being interesting and being entertaining instead of being valuable. We are not going to transform Africa if we are focused on being very interesting and very entertaining. The people that will move Africa forward are people who become valuable. People understand how to create value and deploy that value across the African continent in a way that it can advance the lives of people forward and contribute to the overall GDP of the continents. And you cannot do that by focusing on being entertaining on TikTok, on being entertaining on Instagram. Instagram, TikTok, all these platforms, they are channels and you can choose. Will these channels be for you to communicate value or will it be for you to focus on being entertaining and being interesting? One incredible thing that China got so right and that's it doing so well is that they understood how to retell their young people. If you, if, you, if you like, go and study the history or the economic growth of the Chinese economy in the last 30 years, you see significant actions that they took in terms of vocational training skills, technology, business management, international governance, to make sure that they invest in their young people to be valuable in these core areas so they can become contributors and game changers in the economy and wind up in the global landscape. So out of these six points, I ask you again, who are the young people that will transform Africa? Are you among them? And all of this starts with the consciousness and the intentionality that you will be a transformer and not a consumer. You'll be a transformer and not a destroyer. You'll be a transformer, a contributor, and not a problem watcher. You know, we have problem watchers and problem solvers. 
but transformers are those who solve problems and advance an agenda, but not people who complain and consume and blame every other person. So what will it be for you? That's the question I have for you. Will you be among the young people who trust in Africa? Thank you so much, President, for the opportunity. And I hope that my few thoughts inspired and challenged somebody to do more. Cheers. Wow. Thank you so, 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 so much. Um, guys, we have this on um, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn going on live.